So we have two different phases. We have processional phase and we have ceremony phase. So are you doing cameras on the floor or cameras in the balcony? This is gonna be cameras on the floor. This is assuming the church allows cameras on the floor. If it's in the balcony, we just do two cameras side by side, wide, tight, and we call it a day. Wide, um, medium, wide, medium. We can't well, as really tight as we can. As tight as we can, but it ends up being a medium. <clears throat> so from the balcony, we'll just do two, a two camera setup. Um, very rarely will we try to do a three camera setup in the balcony. It almost looks too identical. It, it, yeah, it it's looks too away. close. And honestly, yeah. it's, clients don't care. I mean, it, it looks completely fine. If you fine. can't get those intimate close up bow shots, then it's not even. So, real quick, all the if same. you are banished to the balcony and that's all the shot you have, a lot of times we will have Ronin uh, uh, for the bridal entrance. Yeah, we'll still be on the bottom and of the foyer. They'll allow us that. to kind of get kind of like that first shot of the bride walking through the church. Here, let me let me go through my thing. You're getting. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do different phases. <clears throat> so, let's see. How am I going to phrase this? The lines aren't straight. The lines aren't straight. So, we have a camera up here on monopod, and sometimes we have a tripod, not in a church, if we're outside, we'll be like further back on a tripod, but assuming we're in a church, tight space, here's like the bridal party. So you don't like a ton of room, here's a groom. So this will probably be the 50, because coming down the aisle, most aisles, I don't know, some are short, some are long. It's effective but either 85 way, millimeter. But either way, once the bride gets close enough, like that's your shot. Um, if you're on a really long lens, then like you don't have a shot from here to here. Which could, which could work, um, but what we do, so he, John's on the 50, so this is J1, because it's like phase one, so that's John, on, this is a camera. <laughs> we get it, we get it, we get it. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, da, 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 da. okay. Kirk, does this pull up on camera? Can you see it? Okay. Okay, so he's on a monopod. That's what it's supposed to be, a monopod. That's a terrible drawing. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, and so then I'm down here, and this is K1. This is my, my phase one, and this keeps coming unlocked. And I'm on the Ronin, and I have no idea how to draw a Ronin. Woohoo, so that's a Ronin, and that's me holding it. <laughs> <laughs> and so what I'll do, what I'll do is sometimes like I'll follow in the whole bridal party just from the back and kind of do this. Like I'm not even moving. And it's kind of cool to see them walking into the door and down the, like, in, I don't know. It's just a kind of a cool perspective, but I'm really just here for the bride. But I'm not going to be sitting around during the processional. I'll just go ahead and get the shots. If they look good, then they look good. FYI, ideally she's on this side and not on this side. So this is, oh. Just because if I'm kind of shooting in this direction, I want her out over here well, so that she's not my shot. Yeah, so during the processional, I'll be off to the side if, um, but I guess I centered myself up here because I'm thinking the bride's coming down. Can you, you get out of the way early because I would think the photographer would be yeah. crazy. Yeah, so I really just need to get, like I wait for the doors to open. I get that door opening shot and she walks through and then I'm basically, my shot's dead. Oh, so you're yeah, I'm in the foyer. Oh. So that door opening shot, yeah, so I'm hidden. It's a great yeah. reveal for your film, seeing the doors open. And honestly, if you tie that into your music selection, you know, you wait for like the music to kind of crescendo and the doors open up, it could be a really emotional piece. And so even if you're banished to the balcony, you could still have a Ronin down here getting that or floor shot. shot. So you're, Whatever. You're, you're filming the doors opening and walking through. Yeah, because you have the planners. Usually there's two people that open the doors, like this grand reveal. And then you just see, just from the back, the dad and the daughter go through. I have a question, because I run into an issue with that same shot. Exposure from the different rooms. Exposed for the inside, Ex not the well, outside. Well, that depends, because if there's like, if this is the outside of the church, and their doors are open, and so daylight's coming through, um, honestly, I've asked them to open the doors because I want that light. And as soon as she goes in, then it gets too dark. But I feel like the doors opening shot and her going in is the shot. If you want the shot to be further down, then you need to expose for inside. But I like, like I said, the door open. When I was shot. saying inside, I just meant expose for when the doors are open, not for when the doors are shut. And, well, it doesn't matter if you have a light source here. You want to expose. It depends. I expose for what's in the foyer. How much of the before you want to capture? Yeah, I expose for what's <clears> in the foyer. <throat> um, okay, so this is where people are. This is me and John. We have an unmanned camera here to the side. What kind of lens do you want? 1635. 1635. I don't know. Again, with a 1.3 crop. Are you sort of like the bride? I'm behind the bride. Sorry, I didn't draw the bride. So I, I, I just want that back shot. I'm going to go, whatever. 
we'll be at 16. Because we're too close to get a medium shot. We want like the whole scene of the doors opening. Um, and it stinks the video that you guys are going to watch is an outdoor wedding, so we don't have that big reveal. But basically, as soon as the, uh, the bride is in good light or up here, Kay backs off. I'm getting the good shot bride. of her walk. I, I like getting the first shot of her walking up the aisle. And then what, then what, what I'll do is I'll actually switch, because I'm on a monopod, get the groom reaction a little bit. Or if the bride is really far down the aisle, uh, let, let me take a step back. When those doors open, I want the shot on the groom because I want the groom's reaction seeing the bride come in. Well, hang on, we haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> so we have an unmanned camera here on a 14, on the 14 mil. So what that does, it's a safe shot, but it's also really beautiful because I'm, I might be in the shot for a second, but then once I get out, you actually see, you know, you see everybody stand up and then you see the bride coming through. So it's actually a usable shot for the cinematic film. Um, we have a, we put it as high as it goes. It's about six feet. Um, You're going to get heads. We're not trying to get over people's heads. I mean, it's actually a nice shot seeing the bride walking through the crowd. So I'll have a tripod set up right here with just a 7200 on, 7, on it, no camera. This is just so I can run over here and... But it's laying down. Hang on. How high up do you open that camera? Six feet. I feel like we have a few different scenarios, so I'm like getting confused. We have but a few I'll, different But I'll set up a tripod so it's easy to just run over and put my camera on it. But we have another camera over here, tripod. So we have four cameras total. Um, and John will swing around to get the groom. So he gets the bride, and then when she gets too close, or maybe she's too far away. This is why he's on the 50. If she's too far away, because I'm getting that shot anyway, he'll be on the groom, he'll get that reaction, then he'll swing around and get her from here to here. So he's mobile being on a, on a monopod. Uh, so once... As soon as she comes up a little bit more, I take a few steps back because I want to get the hand off the exchange. I think there's a camera on here already. No, there's a lens on there. Well, we usually have a camera on one of them, and it's just unmanned, and it's just you rolling. Want to explain this? So after I get the shot, I wait for Kay to uh, swing around, get this camera set up, and for, to get the safe shot done. Once the safe shot is done and Kay's in her shot, then Actually, I, ba then well, I, I back away, different. come over to here, put my camera on. Oh, it's on. a leapfrog. It's literally once it's you know leapfrog. you have your safe camera, then you move and everything else. Because sometimes you'll also move the, uh, the safe shot. It's so closer that's actually to the what I do. That's actually what I do first. Because I'm already in the back. I get my shot. I run out real quick because I don't want to be in their shot. Then I go ahead. Once, by the time I, I swing this camera over here, still on the 14, they're all up front. I'm not in the shot anymore because they're focused on the bride up here. Um, dad giveaway stuff. So phase two... This is so confusing. Every time I move to the center aisle, though, the photographer just can't stop it. And I just learned to just move off to the side and shoot over people's heads. Well, I mean, they could be right next to you. They walk halfway down the aisle. Okay, if they walk down halfway down the aisle, I go and tap them on the shoulder and be like, do you mind squatting? Well, I, well. <laughs> and then if they don't squat, then I move my tripod up right next to them. Because if they're going to be visible, then I'll be visible. But also, just to let so you know, I'm not afraid this of that. is a 14 for beautiful churches, but... Some venues, uh, we might put a, a, like a 24 or even a 50 on it, depending upon. I disagree. I think this is always going to be a 14. You've put, you've put 50s on Not on this, not on the Hinaway. This is what we call Hinaway. Anyways, we swing this camera around. Whatever looks good to you. And so this is phase two, phase <laughs> two. And then I put it like, like a 50 on it. And so now this is my safe medium shot. This so is what now, I was talking about. As soon as you moved it to the center. I thought you, you were talking you, about the high and away. No, no, no. Here. As soon as you move it to the center, then we oh, swap. Oh, because, yeah, because I kind of want a medium. Because if it's a long church anyways, you're still getting, like, the whole bridal party with the 50. So once this is safe, and John swings over here, so this is his ceremony position, too. And then I swing over here. I don't know why this camera's not set up. I feel like we ran out of cameras anyways. And I'll set up. This is my position, too. I'm not even writing there yet. So, so, so it's literally shift. shift. You have two cameras in the balcony. No, we have two cameras in the balcony, and that's assuming we can't be on the floor. Yeah, so we, we just won't set up, be up two cameras, anything. and those cameras are pretty static. And I'll just be on the in the foyer doing whatever I can in the well, foyer. Like we're banished. Sometimes we're not just banished. Sometimes we're banished to the balcony. Sometimes we're just banished to the back row. Sometimes they allow us kind of like in the, in the edges in the extreme. Mm -hmm. I mean, but it's kind of similar. We have, if we're allowed to get close, we like to have the 270 to 200s in the wings. If we have to be far back, it, then we generally just go to a two camera setup. 
Yeah. Because it, it, two, two cameras just kind of pointing like this looks so similar that it's just better to have um, two shots. Does this make sense? But if y'all have a short, a short aisle, do you still feel confident enough to get the bride in I do. Um, I'm very intentional about telling the bride to walk slow. That doesn't always happen, though. Doesn't always happen. But you know, how many, how many times you get a bride? If they're by themselves. Yeah. I, so, it's like, I, it's like they're power walking. I feel like the short aisles are outside, usually not in a church. So if it's outside, she's got a long walk. So I consider the long walk the important part, not the aisle. Once she's coming up the aisle, then I'm on the groom. So you have a, you have, you have a lot of space when you're outside. So he's he's up front squatting. If this is no, the aisle, no, standing sometimes depends. Well, but, but for the groom shot, like once everyone's standing up, I'm standing up. Oh yeah, yeah. Once everybody stands up, well, and then he swings around. Oh, oh. If John's if John's the groom, you know he's getting the bride. Well, no, I say that wrong. He, if the if the aisle is far, and so he doesn't really have a shot of the bride yet. He's just on the groom. He has emotional reaction because that's the first time he saw the bride. The groom, not me. Right, and then he swings around and gets the bride because she's like halfway up now. And then he'd come back over here and get the father-daughter giveaway. So he's getting kind of like some key shots while I'm on the Ronin and I'm moving a camera to the safe uh, back shot. Okay. Once, people are, once people are standing up, though, I'm standing up. Because I'm not. He'll, he'll get the whole wedding party. He'll just be up front squatting. Yeah, I'll be squatting for the wedding party. shifted. Yes. Um, so, oh. Uh, oh, yeah. So the high and wide shot is this is a se this is a separate camera so we have we have four cameras we have four cameras during the during the ceremony and we just when we're done with the Ronin I just put it on its stand I don't take the camera off okay so <laughs> wait I'm confused that this, well, so this so you have so basically you have a camera to off to the right side a camera to the left side one. don't be confused because um, some of the like when, when right here uh, that might actually have like a 5D Mark IV attached to it. I was about to say, I feel like this one, this one camera. just has a 70 to 200. Maybe I had it backwards because John puts his camera on here. I take so, it off the monopod okay, that makes and put it on the sense. tripod. So yeah, this will have a camera just rolling. I just have it as wide as it'll go. It's probably not going to be usable, but it's rolling just in case. Um, so that's kind of for the dock edit if I need it. And this is for the dock edit. But the creative shots are going to be this and this for the processional. Or not that, but you know, the Ronin. You know how it is, it's like muscle memory. You just do it, you don't even sometimes know what you're doing. <laughs> hey. Well, uh, yeah. I know you guys have always been a team, but do you have any suggestions for, I would say 70% of the way from still in the The J2 uh, angle is what I lock in when the groom gets in place. Uh -huh. And it's always great except for when people stand. Mm -hmm. And I even warn the people in front of me, hey, could you just make sure that this is gonna be right behind you, it's gonna be yeah. a really important shot. Yeah. And I can still like, forget. If you, if you can, you could even be right here on the 70 to 200 if, if you're allowed to get up. But you're still off to if, the side, but. If it were me, um, there's no people in how the many way. cameras do you have? I'm rolling four cameras inside myself. So wow. Three, three That's tough. I mean, if it were me, your safe shot is going to catch like the, the bride walking down the aisle. I wouldn't worry so much about this. As long as you can be up front, you can get the groom reaction and the bride walking down on your monopod. I try, to, I try to do that for sure, especially if they'll get emotional before she even starts. Mm -hmm. and I get, they're never going to know anyway. Just get an emotional shot. And then yeah. Goes. I mean, and what I've done before, sometimes I can set this like if we're outside and there's more flexibility to run around because he's up here. Once the groom's out, I'll focus this on the groom and I'll put it where no, where, where no one will block him. Like I'll put it further up where people can't stand up. So this actually has a good safe groom shot. Um, for me to consider, you know, using. He'll still get it, but... Um, the tricky thing here after this situation is I, I'm basically uh -huh. the same as, as him with four cameras and myself, uh, is uh, the, the problem that I run into is sometimes I forget to keep track of how long I stay in the room before I switch back. Sometimes uh, in my head, it's been, let's say, four seconds, it's only been two. Oh, wait, that's, that was really short. Because so you feel real rushed because she's coming. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So you just have to be mindful that leave it enough so yeah. this is useful. We also yeah. shoot, I also shoot that shot in 60 frames because that'll help me Slow double up. Slow down. Yeah, if we need to. <sighs> the photographer that I shoot with mostly 
she will camp out kind of right behind the officiant um, and to get the bride coming down the aisle. Is this, this like an outdoor wedding? wedding? Yeah, these are outdoor weddings. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I usually will camp out close to her because I don't want to be in front of everybody. Mm -hmm. Is it, I just, I think there's an intention not to have a bunch of photographers in the front of the church in front of the wedding party. Yeah, when a church. Um, or, or in the ceremony. Yeah. I mean, I guess it just depends on the church's rules. If they allow it, then usually, I mean, we get up there with the photographer all the time. Um, what I, my personal favorite shot for the processional is actually behind the bridal party if we're outside and there's space on a 70 to 200, because then you get the compression, that beautiful bokeh, um, the whole processional is so pretty. And I actually shoot like over or through the bridesmaids. Um, and you'll see that in the video that I'm going to show you guys today that we edited. But outside, you have a lot of flexibility. Um, if, if he's here, well, he'll crouch until everybody stands, and then he blends in if he stands up. Yeah. Um, and a lot of times, chairs go all the way to the edges if you're inside, even just a venue. In a case like that, we just, you know, we're not going to, we're not going to stress, we're not going to fight it, we'll just do two cameras shooting in the back. You know, if, like if they don't have the logistics for us, we're not going to create the, you know, we're not well, going to so, move chairs. Sometimes Kay will just be on a monopod the entire ceremony floating back and forth if we're yeah. literally stuck at the front. Yes. Yeah, so, so the only time we really do that is for Jewish weddings um, where we have the hoopah and you've got families standing around. And if there's walls here and we like, we have no shot of the vows. Um, this all will stay the same. The back stuff will stay the same. But so everybody's in here, and no. so you got family. <laughs> Not to draw everyone. Da, 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 da. So, anyways, <laughs> so we have our back camera here. That's a terrible camera. Um, so that just gets the pretty scene in the back. And then because there's so many people standing up here, if we're kind of back here behind. We can still shoot the bride and groom, and I'll, if there's space, I'll just run behind them and get the other side. When, like, just I'm kind of there for the vows. What happens when the synagogue has also sitting on the side and the other side of the, which is this one? Right Sometimes here. you just can't do anything and just get the best. You mean shot like you can. everybody's sitting over here in chairs? Correct. Then I will shamelessly run through the front. I'll just kind of like stand here and get my shot. Um, and when there's a lot of people up front, you're kind of, I mean. You're not the only one up there. That's kind of how I feel. <laughs> Especially for Indian weddings, they want you up front. They, don't, they, like, they want to see the cameras. Yeah. So it's really, again, kind of being comfortable being seen, but also evaluating what it looks like. You don't want to be like the only person up there. You know, and it's really good to see what the photographer is going to do. If you're going to be up, up here, um, honestly, a lot, of, a lot of times they'll be up there too. You know, if they see, oh, if you're going to be up there, I'm going to get those shots too. Um, if they have a real problem with it, then you can kind of, um, if they had a real problem with it, I would just stay in the back. I asked the bride, how evasive do you mind me being? Say again? I just asked the bride, how evasive do you mind me being? She said, if what you got to get, I don't care where you are. Okay. I wouldn't use the word invasive because well, most I mean, people wouldn't yeah, want I mean, that. I mean, I mean by, do you mind me being up front or behind or, and then yeah. most of the time, 99% of the time, they say, I don't care where you are. You get what you got to get. I yeah. don't worry about the crowd. Yeah, I don't e we don't even ask because I think that's assumed. They want us to do what we need to do for the shot. I, mean, I just worked with a photographer and said, what's your plan? Uh -huh. What's your game plan? And let's work together and see you know, how we're going yeah. to do this. Wanted to go over real quick, too. Uh, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> looks like a bus. <laughs> it's, a, it's a bus. <laughs> this is, uh, someone asked me to do the, thank you. I'm not a perfectionist. This, is, this will get the job done. I just want, someone asked me also to go over the toast setup. And, um, you know, so let's just say that this is like the dance floor and this is where the band is, or the DJ. I like to put the toaster kind of in the center of the dance floor a little bit. I like to remove them from the stage. There's nothing worse than the toaster being on the stage or literally right in front. Plus, there's the DJ speakers right here. And some, you, you just want a little bit of separation from all that stuff. Put the toaster um, right here. We have our first light right here. <laughs> And the, uh, Can I draw it? <laughs> no, we don't have enough time. So the first light is, um, is backlighting this toaster, or hair lighting the toaster, and it's also front lighting 
And that's the, the when and you have a perfect setup of them facing each other. You, there's so many times the head table's over here. It's like weird. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, right. And then so right here we have our second light, which is backlighting the bride and groom and then front lighting the toaster. And so that's how you can achieve with, with a two light system, you know, really good front and rim lighting on the... Um, He's going to take a picture of this. Can I redraw this? No. <laughs> we'll, we'll send... We'll send. <clears throat> right. And so if, if it's one of those things where, let's just say that I've already set up a light here and just a light here. Just because it's an easy setup a lot of times. So this light is going to be turned off. This light is still backlighting and front lighting, but then I take my, um, then, then I'll take LED. a torch LED, you know, I'll take a couple of them, then I'll front light this and. Um, a lot of times this is easier, just planning on using a torch for the toaster. Um, in this situation, where is the rest of the crowd seating behind, behind the ground? Right? Oh, just, um, There's just like tables here. Wait, so to your camera would be. Sorry, like, this, this is wrong. <laughs> So I'm shooting from over here because okay. I like getting the side because, honestly, I like getting all the decor on this side as the background. And then um, a lot of times we could just shoot like this, you know, so I can actually man both cameras. Um, but the cam other camera might be that far away or something, but it's pointing at the Or we'll room. crisscross them. Yeah, I mean, either way, you're going to get the Whatever the angle is, because yeah. you don't want the band of the speakers behind your toaster. Yeah, if this shoots that way, you'll see speakers. What's really nice is especially if, you know, they have, like, nice table decor with, like, you know, candle fun little lights. candles and yeah. stuff. Yeah, it's like Then when you get that background. compression on the, uh, you know, in the background, the candlelight looks really cool as kind of like in the, in the yeah. behind. The and something what we have started doing just recently um, is shooting real low if there's chandeliers on this in the ceiling you shoot low and it's from the side So it's not unflattering you're not like looking up their nose But if you're low and then you get like the chandelier in the background So if there's not much going on or if there's just people or servers or something then I'll look low and see what kind of shot I have uh, looking up so and Sorry my drawing is so sloppy just to reiterate if the if I did have the two lights set up this light is here backlighting the toaster front lighting the uh, the bride and groom then I just put a little torch LED here, front, um, front lighting the toaster. And, be, and because we're lighting it like this, when you uh, shoot like here, you're going to get really dynamic lighting on the toast giver. I'm, I have a very specific question that you hopefully will help somebody else do. But at the, the um, uh, oh my goodness, I forgot the name of it, the, uh, the ballrooms uh, that you mentioned yesterday, right here in Atlanta. Bill, oh, Bill Moore. Bill. Okay. There's times when they put the band a lot of times is in the in that side where you mentioned, but sometimes on the top left is where the DJ would be in the DJ. Yeah. In that corner. So how would you We have a wireless mic, so we can put the toaster wherever we want. But well let's still put them on the dance floor. The same, same, same lights, like you would put the we're we're point. more focused on putting our lights where the dance floor is. Right. Even if the DJ's over here, his speakers are still probably here. Okay. So it, we kinda like I like hiding our gear in with their speakers. There's power there usually, and people aren't going to be walking over there and tripping and stuff. Um, but John, I do have a question, like because John, you have a question. I have a question because he sets up lights, and sometimes I walk in and the lights are like this, or the lights are like this. So I'm just wondering, does it depend on the venue space? If is, do you do a certain setup for a bigger space versus a smaller space? What I was going over yesterday <laughs> is my my current train of thought is that if there's a band. I want both of my lights on the side of the stage. And the reason is is because so many times the, the crowd, the crowd of people are all focused right here. And so I want that front lighting on, on that kind of like that whole area up there. Um, but and, it know, might, and it might bleed out some of if they have horrible lights. You know, it might cut right, out it might cut through their lights. But I mean, yeah. it, it's kind of like. It really depends on the venue space. If I have room for long throws, a lot of times I will crisscross them. Um, it, it I just kind of like make it, make it just a quick judgment call when I get there. I don't depending think upon where I can put the lights and where power is. Yeah, I don't think there's a right or wrong answer. You always ask the venue to turn off their lights. We, we do yeah. for like the formal dances and yeah. Uh, the if toasts. they have can lights on, we ask them to turn off can lights uh, or the, yeah, for the toasts. Um, It'll make a huge difference. If you're yeah. ever shooting reception and the lighting, if you bring your own lights and the lighting just doesn't look good, it's usually because there's too much ambient light coming from their lights. Especially for detail shots. If you feel like you're not, your detail shots just aren't popping, even though you have your light set up, 
um, then you realize, oh, the room lights are on, and you have them like turn off all the lights. Suddenly, you have like the cinematic d detail shot. What about the uh, 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 decoration, like the, 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 the ones illuminating the walls? Like, oh, oh, the up lighting. Yeah, the up those don't really affect. Those don't really affect the, the dance floor or anything, really. I don't think um, it'll be in the background, but I hate LED up lighting. <laughs> It's true. Yeah, here's a good question. How do you do a band name? Yeah, like occasionally you'll have that, um, that band. Where it just goes, goes up. up. Yeah, kind of just, is there anything you can do about that? Just try to shoot around it. Try your best to match your frequency of your Yeah, we'll just shutter. start playing with our shutter. Sometimes we will go down as low as 30 shutter, and it kind of disappears. Um, sometimes it doesn't. You sometimes just, it doesn't. It's there. And, uh, yeah, if... If, especially a lot of times, uh, DJs will have that, and so their lights will flicker on people. But if you have your lights set up, you can really focus on the people in your light, and that'll minimize the flickering instead of, instead of having their lights lighting the people uh, or you focusing on those spots. Um, I don't know what other scenario we could do, but was that helpful? Sarah. Okay. Good. If y'all have your lights set up by the band, then for the toasting, you just move them. No, we'll just put up a torch LED. Yeah. Torches are great for toasts. I mean, we use the torch it's such LEDs. an easy little setup. We use it to kind of fill in the light where there is none. Um, it's just an easier logistics. Especially for the, the toast. Around. We use it for like the cake cutting. Yeah. And even when you go into full on dancing, you know, sometimes. Let's say I do have my lights here and here, and then you have the whole dance floor. You know, you're really only getting this area of the dance floor well, well illuminated. Sometimes what I do is and I'll move my light just to, to try to... illuminate to, this side. Then you kind of get this, and you kind of get this. <laughs> then sometimes if, if I can, I'll put torch LEDs, you know, behind the tables going like this, right here. And the thing, and it, just remember, it, you don't want to just cast like tons of light. You don't uh, want four lights on each corner. You won't have any more dimension. Well, no, no, you have to, you have to put the lights at different uh, intensities. Oh, okay. So if you do something like this, to torch LEDs uh, at a lesser intensity, you're just trying to fill in where there's no light. You, you don't want to illuminate it as much as your primary lights. You're just adding in fill. And if you do that, if you treat the, the, your smaller lights as fill and your bigger lights as your key, It'll create really dramatic lighting. And uh, do you ever run into issues with? Uh, I know that you use uh, gels for um, for the um, this lights, but uh, to match the um, the LED one, uh, do you ever find them? Um, I mean, what is your sweet spot for matching the, the, the temperature? We just do it by eye. We just try to match our lights, mm -hmm. and so there's a dial. I wish it had like a number on the back so you know yeah. which to yeah. dial it to, but you're I've always just kind of that, eyeing it. The torch LEDs? The torch. Not far. Yeah, if you put one here, it's just going to illuminate like this corner. And honestly, we'll keep a torch. And you know, if we find that grandma's in the dark over here dancing, we'll bring the torch over here really quick just to get that shot of her. Okay, so the video we're going to show you guys today. So today's a day of, a lot of not a lot, but several videos. So it'll be totally different than yesterday. Um, so the, the film that you guys will watch me edit later, I'm just going to go ahead and show you the finished version now, but you'll also see the uh, same version. It's going to be on top of each other uh, without any color grading or smoothing or recomp recomposition or anything like that. So you'll be able to see what we do to our films in post. And, and guys, um, when we're showing the films, uh, the, the whole reason why... Um, we Kate, when Kay did her pieces, she recorded herself doing it at home. And the reason was is because this will ensure that we can get cover all the content that she wants to co uh, cover for the class. Because if we did it live, it, it would have just take taken forever. I'd be fumbling. 20 times longer. Yeah. We do want you to let you know that it, 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 even if we're playing a film, we want to be there to kind of answer questions, point things out that might not be pointed out. So treat it as interactive as anything else that we do during the day. Yeah. Um, after we were going to do this, we'll do the, the um, how to pose for video and how to work with a photographer. And then we'll get into pricing.